All right. My question that I'm going to address is how do we have favor with the community that we serve and the church that we also serve? If you'll turn to Acts 2, we'll start in verse 42. So, who enjoyed this community lunch today? Good, good. Well, I'm going to build off a point from using that as an example. And later on, we'll move Alright. And they devote, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and, and the prayers. We had prayer, we had praise, we had scripture. Week in and week out, we hear praise, prayer, scripture to build us up, to edify the church and the community that we serve. And we devote ourselves to this book, this scripture that God gives us by, by His grace. And we fellowship. We hang out like we do at the moment. We make friends. And we pray with them. We get to know them. Part of the central thing of having favor is when we have this thing we call community lunch that God allows, He breaks down a wall of, not, of judgmental views that we have against everybody and anybody that we meet that we never knew beforehand. Because, Pastor Phil, never knew Doug four years ago. Am I correct? Never knew him. And through God breaking down that wall that is there, you establish trust, which is essential in establishing favor with those people. There was a question that I wanted to throw out when uh, I was studying this text. How can you serve the church and the community it is in if you cannot establish trust? Because the community, if it does not trust you, it will not allow you to serve it. So you gain favor by God alone. And you establish that favor by having friendships going, saying, you know what? You know what? Let's have lunch. Let's get together and hang out. And so, oh, you know what? I just want you to come to church so you'll believe in God. We do more than that. We want to establish the friendship that comes with a friendship of God also. It's not just about, oh, okay, we're going to just listen to Pastor Phil preach today and and we're all about to write you No. They were establishing friendships. They were hanging out. And it all came up on every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. That all is a reverent fear, a respectable fear of God, giving, breaking down this wall that we have, that is there before and when God's there. It's gone. I came to Oakwood about over a year ago. There was a wall there. I was kind of curious because I've never seen a community poverty stricken. I was like, okay, this is going to be different. But through time, God broke down that wall. I was like, you know, I enjoy this. I enjoy serving the community that God has given me. I enjoy going up, up and going like, let's go grab something to eat. Because that builds a relationship and that in the end builds friendship. And through that friendship, he can help other people through that community. And all who believed were together, were together and had all things in common. One central thing that this church, that this community has in common is that we all love the church and the community that God has given permission us to serve. It is a <coughs> privilege to be able to serve a community like this. And I honestly greatly appreciate it. But that privilege was also given by grace. And God purchased this community so that we could serve it. 
And through that, again, we establish relationships. We are building that favor. Because people, we have haters and we have lovers, and then we got people who just like us. <laughs> Amen. And just gone. some people are not hate you and some people are don't like you. Some people are don't love you. Usually the biggest part is don't be the haters. Because they don't like what you're doing. But I want to keep on, keep on. Because through time, heck, they might start liking what you're doing. So, you keep on. And that is that you preach the gospel even though you've got haters right beside you saying, you know what? That's not right. Don't do it. Because I had a whole lot of haters before I came to college. As soon as I stepped out on that road, I gave I gave friend after friend after friend. And the haters left. I haven't heard from them since. So, you gain friends, you lose friends. But it's all to establish the relationship and the gospel that God wants to establish in his community. And they were selling their possessions and their belongings, ensuring the proceeds to all as any had need. Now this doesn't mean that they sold everything they had to where they became homeless. It doesn't mean that. It just means they gave up something they didn't need. Okay, let's see here. Let's say you have a couple of CDs that you can sell to a CD store. The money you can make off that, you go give it to Oakwood. That's what it's saying. You sold some of the, the, the stuff that you did not need, and what you made off it, you gave it to the people who really need it. I mean, <laughs> there's stuff in our houses, our homes, we don't need we don't need a television we don't need the cds all we need is christ and christ alone and with christ we cannot fail so therefore <coughs> we can study his word and through that we grow and what, what stuff we have so we can use the money to spread the gospel now god doesn't need the money but he uses it as a tool to build and to edify the church that he has given to us. Because we give people food. That community lunch is not possible without somebody paying for that food. And therefore, money is used to pay for that food. So the community can have it for free. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. They received food with glad and generous hearts. They hung out. They had lunch. They went and had a Bible study in their home. It's like Pastor Phil going to Gary and saying, you know what? Can we, can we talk about God? Or can we address something? He's wanting to build that relationship. Or Gary going up to Pastor Phil and like, let's grab lunch. Let's see how I can fix my alcohol. Let's see how God can bring me out of that. I'm wanting to grow from it. The central theme, establish the relationship. Because without the relationship, it's pointless. And they receive the food with gladness in his heart. Food was given to them for free. One central thing. We're providing for the poor. Paul was told, don't forget about the poor. When you forget about the poor, you forget about the strong people who are willing to head for the gospel because it's all they have. They're willing to head for Christ because it's all they've got. They don't have a home. They don't have money to pay the bills that they're in for that home. So all they have is Christ. And that's what they're going to head for because they know that they can rest in his sovereignty and his grace. Take them out of that form. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Every single week, I see 
maybe 30 to 40 people over, allies over. And first question came to mind, why do we not have numerical growth? But then that question went away, because it doesn't matter. When you are a church, numerical growth is somewhat good, but at the same time, if it just grows and grows and grows, and your spirit is not, you're becoming spiritually obese, because you're not doing anything. And it makes me very angry to just sit there and not do anything. And now, when I go serve, I'm like, I enjoy this. Because it feels weird not to do anything week by week. I want to go grab lunch. I want to go hang out. I want to spend time. I want to encourage. I want to teach the community that I serve. You can't do that if you just sit there. The whole central purpose of the church that has been established through God is to serve the community and proclaim the gospel. And you cannot do that without establishing a relationship with that community. You preach the gospel, you establish the relationship, you serve the community, and you will gain favor with all the people.